It's about the end of spring break, and what better way to end spring break than with another CCNA2 video? This time is chapter 4. A great chapter to end spring break with. Why? Because it's nice and short. So, this should go pretty quickly. It's also <clears throat> pretty much a review chapter. So, there won't be too many new concepts. We've got the concept of a collision domain and broadcast domain. Uh, switch port security. Those will, I think, be the only new concepts that you'll see versus CCNA1. Because in CCNA1, we talked, talked about switch networks quite a bit. So we're going to start off with local area network design. Um, and this slide, this slide is just talking about the complexity, the growing pl complexity of networks, whereas you don't have a single office or a single uh, building that your network is isolated to. You don't need to, your employees don't need to be on site to access your network. Your information must be able, must have the capability of being accessed anywhere in the world in most situations. So that is going to make things a bit more complicated when setting up a network. We also have the idea of a converged network where you have all different types of data uh, being sent along the same network. You need to keep those conversations separate. You need to keep them in order. Uh, we talked about how that works in CCNA1 through different protocols that are in place. So again, this is somewhat review. In fact, it is review. We've seen the idea of a converged network, I believe, in one of the first uh, two or three chapters in CCNA1. So nothing really new here. Multiple types of traffic, um, different types of data that could be sent, voice, email, video conferencing, basically anything over the same network so um, you can go ahead and read those different bullet points there but we've discussed them before here we have the idea of a borderless network just basically meaning that your network can again as we referred to before be accessed from anywhere so you've got different portals to get into um, each network here if you wanted to okay so anything can be accessed from anywhere uh, your network needs to be easily be, needs to be easily scalable reliable um, and you have policies in place to um, make that happen you have access control lists that can be set for each different network um, or the, the entire network as a whole depending on how you want to set it up okay so this is just an idea that the access the network can be accessed anytime from anywhere if you have the proper credentials or the network has been set up so that you can access it of course, you can set up your network so that certain individuals or um, certain devices can access it and certain devices can't. And we'll be getting into um, those types of settings in the next few chapters. Here again, we have some review in the uh, hierarchy in a borderless switch network. We've seen the core distribution and access layers in CCNA1. Um, you got the principles that's built off of, that it's hierarchical, that each layer performs a specific function. Uh, you've got your end users and switches. Down here, uh, servers at the access layer. You've got your routers that may be less powerful here. And then you've got routers up here that are usually the more powerful devices that uh, send your traffic to different regions. Okay. That is not as typical a setup. You basically take these two and combine them and you get a collapse core where you just have your end users and then you just have uh, your routers slash high speed routers here um, and you're communicating through a collapse core system rather than having um, two separate um, sets of routers here. Okay, uh, That's more typically what you would see and these, these uh, symbols actually are not routers. These are layer three switches which you'll see a little later on in the materials. Um, but they could be routers or layer 3 switches. Layer 3 switches do perform uh, routing functions. Okay, um, so you've got modularity basically allowing you to add to your network setup as you need to. Um, that's what modularity means, basically the ability to add or subtract as need be. Uh, resiliency, is your network always on? Flexibility, can you share resources or uh, use resources in the most efficient way possible to meet end user demands. Uh, so, so those are things that go into your borderless switched network. And again, we've discussed this a little bit in CCNA 1. And here you just have an example of your access distribution, which would be, again, your lower power routers and your core, which would be your higher powered 
uh, routers um, in the middle here. And typically, you're going to kind of combine those two. So that would be your collapsed core distribution model there. Okay. What we're going to concentrate on is the role of switched networks here. One second, we'll go back to the previous slide just to make sure you got the access layer um, and define these. Um, access layer, which is your switches that will be at the edge of your network, um, typically connecting to another switch or combination of switches and routers at the distribution layer. At that point, that's typically where your quality of service, your security, um, your routing is going on. Um, and then that's going to connect to your backbone of your network with your um, highest, higher power devices, your faster routers, uh, faster switches if need be. And it could be a layer three switch as well. Okay. And a collapsed core would just be taking the distribution and core um, responsibilities and kind of just combining them into a single device, which is more of a typical setup these days. So we'll jump back here again. So the role of our switch network, we talked about switches and what they do. They basically make sure that traffic is sent only to the destination device rather than flooding the network uh, with a bunch of traffic, which would be more like what would happen if you had hubs in a network, which are devices that we shouldn't really see in networks too much anymore. Okay. Uh, you, in the past, would have more of a flat switch network system, and you might still see that. That's not too uncommon. Um, but you can also have a hierarchical switch network like this, where you might have a couple regular switches and a couple layer three switches finally connecting to a router up here. So um, the setups can be complex or, or a little more simple. Uh, the switch network does allow you to have more flexibility, uh, more traffic management, quality of service, uh, additional security can be implemented on each of these devices. Uh, and then, of course, it supports wireless connectivity, uh, mobile services, IP telephony. So you all see all of that down here. Okay, so we'll be setting up a couple of these types of services to um, ensure security, make sure traffic only goes where it wants, uh, things of that nature. Uh, really lighten this chapter to begin with. Then we get more into VLANs and inter-VLAN routing in a little bit. We talked about uh, fixed switch configurations and the different types of switches that are available in CCNA1. So fixed, just normal old switch. Uh, modular platform, you can go ahead and add more ports through adding blades to um, this modular setup. A bit more expensive, but does allow you a bit more flexibility. Uh, you've got stackable switches, which, well, can act as one switch, essentially. It's different from having just four switches connected normally in that if you were to receive a frame into one port of any one of these switches and the uh, exit port was in this set, it would only have to do one lookup to send out that exit port, okay, in the, in the MAC address or CAM table, all right? But if these were not stacked like this, uh, let's say that I don't know. You've got uh, the switch up here, number one, um, and these are all connected, and it needs to end up going out a port and switch four, okay? And all these switches are in between one and four. Um, switch one would have to make a decision, say, okay, I need to go to, let's say, fast Ethernet port four on switch two. And then switch two needs to look up and say, okay, I need, I need to go to fast Ethernet uh, six on switch three. And there's basically one, two, three, four, um, times you have to look in your MAC address or CAM table to uh, make a decision as to where that frame is supposed to go. With a stacked configuration, you only need to do one lookup. Okay, it says, okay, it needs to go out, switch fours, port, blah, 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 and just sends it on down. Okay, so that's the uh, advantage of stackable um, configuration switches um, versus just having four that are corrected or connected normally. Right, so here we go, switched environment. So again, a little bit of review. We've got how switches make decisions in frame forwarding. They, as we have talked about before, learn about MAC addresses to store in this MAC address table um, through the ingress or 
uh, source address on a frame. Okay, so ingress port means the port on which data is flowing into, the frames going into that port, that's ingress. As the switch sends the data out, that's the egress port. Okay, so ingress for data coming into the switch, egress for data going out of the switch. Okay, um, so it makes a decision based on the ingress port because that's, that's how it learns addresses and the destination port. It's going to look in its MAC address table to see um, if it has a, a match for the destination port and send the traffic out there. Of course, if there's no match, then the switch is going to broadcast that frame out and eventually, hopefully, well, it should learn about um, the destination port as it sends traffic back to, to the original sender. And basically here we have what we just talked about um, the process the, the switch uses to learn about these MAC addresses. So um, as frames come into the switch, uh, it learns MAC addresses. It's stored in the CAM or MAC address table. Uh, CAM is a content addressable memory, which is used uh, in high-speed searching applications. Uh, information in the MAC address table is used to send the frames. Talk about that. If it's not in the MAC address table, it will flood to all ports or broadcast out all ports. More review, we've talked about store and forward versus cut through. Store and forward is the default um, configuration for your switch. It'll go ahead and use store and forward, which will do an error check and make sure the frame is intact before sending it on out. Uh, cut through is just going to make sure that it reads the destination address and then send it on forward, depending on what type of cut through method you use. Um, you've got both fast forward, fast forward and fragment free uh, cut through methods that I think we'll see in the next couple slides. Okay, so store and forward is first, uh, which basically takes a look at the entire frame, uh, does a frame check sequence, um, a cyclical redundancy check, makes sure the frame is intact and then forwards it on out so you don't have well errant frames running through your network it is a little bit slower uh, but not much or noticeably most uh, the time you'll just go ahead and leave on store and forward switching but if you want the fastest switching possible you'll be using cut through uh, cut through forward uh, cut through switching basically takes a look at the destination or reads just enough to see what the destination MAC address is then sends it on out, okay? Um, that is fast forward cut through switching. There's also fragment free, which will read the first 64 bytes to make sure it's not a runt um, frame, <clears throat> and then it'll send it on out that way. So um, those are the two different techniques. I don't think you need to know the two separate ones for this chapter. We did discuss them back in CCNA 1, though. Here we have the concept of collision domains. Uh, you want to make sure you know collision domain versus broadcast domain. Each port on a switch is its own collision domain. A collision domain is a segment where devices compete to communicate. So each port on a switch, you could have, po have possible collisions if you were in half duplex mode because you have devices competing to send and receive um, on that same line or on that same port. Okay, so that's where collisions could exist. If you're in full duplex, which is the default, and you shouldn't see many half duplex situations these days, you're not going to have dis uh, collisions at all. Um, but it is important to know that that collision domain is um, each port on a switch being its own collision domain or segments where devices compete to communicate. Okay, um, if you have a device like a switch that's set up for du full duplex and a PC for instance maybe it's set up with half duplex for some reason the switch will notice that full duplex is not working and switch to half duplex okay that is gonna, that's going to happen uh, when the initial communication starts between the PC and the switch okay um, in fact if there's any error in communication uh, using full duplex, the switch will go ahead and knock itself to half duplex. So even though a device 
might be full duplex on the other line. If there's a, a few errors in the initial communication process, the switch can revert to half duplex and you might have to go in and switch it back to full manually. So that's something that can happen, just be aware of that. A broadcast domain is different. A broadcast domain is, well, where traffic will be broadcast to. Uh, each switch, I shouldn't say each switch is its own broadcast domain because if you have multiple switches connected together, they are all considered part of the same single broadcast domain. Okay, it's basically where your broadcast can be heard. All right, so if you don't have network separation or a separate VLAN set up, uh, you're all in the same broadcast domain. Um, so we're going to talk about reducing the size of your broadcast domain to optimize your network speed, um, your network traffic in the next chapter. All right, so that's what a broadcast domain is again. That's where, well, wherever your broadcast can be heard. And for our knowledge at this point, that would be a network basically. I mean, each network is its own broadcast domain. Uh, when we break VLANs down, each VLAN will be its own broadcast domain. Okay, but we don't do that just yet. We haven't done that just yet. And we have a couple ways switches help alleviate network con uh, congestion. Um, like I said, each port on a switch is its own collision domain, so um, it basically splits up different your different collision domains into separate um, uh, separate ports. So that's going to help your network out rather than them all being uh, run into the same port. Uh, providing full duplex communication, taking advantage of their high port density or high port number, uh, buffering large frames, employing high speed ports, taking advantage of their fast internal switching process. Uh, having a low port per port cost, well, in general, it depends on what type of switch you're buying. Uh, they can get a little expensive. And that's the end of the chapter. So not too much content here, no commands, just concepts. Um, if you need to read a little bit more about this or that, maybe your access distribution corollaries, I think a couple of those questions will come up. Uh, your collision and broadcast domains. It is a pretty light chapter, though, that test hopefully won't be that hard and we'll get into more commands um, in regards to switches, switch port security and things of that nature in chapter 5.